Hi, my name is Jeremy McKinney with uh, We Care For You Ministries. I'm here with Dan and Linda Wilson, and uh, we're talking about supernatural marriage. And I actually have a story about that, uh, which is personal for me because it was my own story. My wife and I met uh, four, four years ago, and it was really incredible how it all happened. God just really set everything up and together uh, for us to meet, and I'm just going to tell you shortly about that now. Uh, so in 2008, I was uh, living with two roommates in, uh, in Florida, and we had just incredible times in the presence of God in, in our house there, and I remember uh, one day I was, I was spending time with the Lord, and, and He spoke to me, and He said, in two weeks, there's a conference coming up at your church, and when this conference is over, this by the time this weekend is over, your life is going to go in a completely different direction. Everything that you've known, everything that you've been doing is all changing. You're going in a total different, your life is doing a 180 and you're going in a totally different direction. Now this is kind of scary to me because I, I didn't know what that meant. And I told my roommates, I was like, guys, you know, what? what do you think about this? I, I feel kind of nervous. I don't know what it's like the unknown, not knowing what's going to happen. And uh, this conference was being hosted by We Care For You Ministries, Dr. K. Beyer. And um, so when I went to that conference, you know, I kind of had my radar up looking around. Okay, God, what's this thing that, you know, is, is going to happen here? And um, I was a part of the intercessory team at the church. And uh, there was a, a gentleman there, uh, Caleb Brundage, and he was there doing the flags and, and uh, for, the, for the meeting. And the head intercessor that I was a part of from the group I was a part of, she asked me if I would go and talk to him and ask him if he would come back in the intercessory uh, prayer room and pray with us before each session because he was an intercessor and she wanted me to ask him that. So I asked him, he said, sure. And so I remember so, so plainly one day we were sitting back uh, in the room and we were praying and all of a sudden, he, he, he has this thing where he closes his eyes and he just sort of rocks and he just prays right out of heaven. And it's so incredible. And he looks up at me and he goes, points at me like this and he says, have you ever thought about getting involved in Kay Byer's ministry? And I was like, no, I have never thought about that. And he said, well, you need to get involved. You're supposed to be there. God wants you there. I was like, okay, you know, this is like, okay, I'm thinking in my mind, all right, is this the thing that God said that I was going to move into? So I, afterwards, I came up to him and I said, well, you know, what am I supposed to do? Just, you know, walk up to these people and say, here I am, God told me to come, you know, how do I do this? And he said, just start helping them, just get involved, just start doing the work. When they're loading up, just go help them. So that's what I did. I started helping. I was loading up, whatever. They invited me out to, to dinner that night with them after the last session of the conference. And I, I thought to myself, I thought, you know, who's going to help you guys unload all this stuff in Tampa tomorrow? And they said, well, just, you know, I was talking to Jolene, um, K. Byer's daughter, and she said, uh, well, just my mom and I are. And I thought, well, gosh, you know, you guys are not going to be able to do that. I said, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll come meet you guys in Tampa tomorrow, and, uh, and I'll help you unload everything. And, of course, they were shocked that I would do that. So I drove over there because um, it was about a 45-minute drive from my house. So I drove over there to help them, and <laughs> by the time we got done unloading everything, it was like, you know, or by the time we got done unloading everything, it was like 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We went and had lunch, and when we came back, it was like I couldn't get myself to leave. Now, Kay had left and went home, and by the time she got home, Jolene and I were still there talking. We ended up talking till like 12 o'clock in the morning, just about the things of God and about you know life and things like that. And, and I started thinking to myself, okay, now is this woman just like wanting a friend or is there something happening here? You know, I, I, I kind of felt that. So I drove home and, you know, through, through many, many, many different things that happened in, in my life in that time, confirmations of people coming up to me and saying, oh, I had a dream about you and, and, and that, that Dr. K. Byer, her daughter, I had a dream about the two of you. A friend of mine came up and told me that. I said, oh, what was the dream about? He said, I can't tell you now, but I'll tell you later. And, and I, would, I would pressure him for a couple days. I was like, no, tell me what this dream was because something's going on and I don't know what it is. I don't know what any of it means. And he said, I can't, I can't tell you now. I'll tell you later. So, so long story short, uh, basically, I asked the Lord. It, it, it finally came into my spirit, okay, could this be the one I'm supposed to marry? Now, at the time, I was 23. 
And she was 35, 12 years older than me. Already had a five-year-old girl and from a previous marriage. And so I said, okay, Lord, you know, she's much older than me. She's already got a daughter. I don't know that I'm ready to be a father yet. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord speak to me so strong, and he, he kind of rebuked me, and he said, he said, hey, I adopted you, and I'm, I'm calling you to be this child's father because her natural father is not what she needs. So I, so I said, okay, Lord, if this is what you want, I want you to give me three things. And I told him what three, what three things were. And I'll tell you just the one major one that happened. I said, I said, Lord, I want my mom to call me on the phone and tell me that this is okay. When she does, then I'll, that'll be my final straw, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll go for it with everything I have. So, we, uh, Lou Engel was doing a, uh, the call in Orlando, and he was doing a pre-call rally. Now, keep in mind, this is about a week after I met her, after I met Jolene. There was about seven days in between to the time I'm telling you now from when I met her. And so he was doing a pre-call rally at a church in Lakeland, and he... Uh, there was a bunch of people there, probably over a thousand people there, and so we took the youth group uh, there. And after the meeting was over, we we got in our car. We were walking in the parking lot, and my mom looks at me and she goes, "Hey, I just want you to call me on my cell phone when you're driving home. I, I need to talk to you about something." And I said, "Okay." And and what I had told the Lord I wanted was not even in my mind. I wasn't even thinking that was what it was. I was thinking she was going to talk to me about the meeting or something. So I'm driving down the road. I call her, and she <laughs> she says hello, and she's like crying on the phone, and she's like. Everything in my head and everything in my mind is telling me that this is too soon. It's just too much. It doesn't make any sense, but I know that I've heard God, and I have to tell you that it's okay for you to marry this woman. And that was the final thing. All three things I asked for all happened within seven days of what I asked. And so now, and, and, I, and I'll tell you this too, there were people that were very influential in my life. Um, and I would never, let me just say this, I will never, ever, 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 ever tell anyone to go against what their leadership is saying. But I had people that were voices in my life that were saying that they felt like this was not the direction for me to go. And uh, it, was not, it was not the direction for me to go into. And, and I, I said, you know, what do you do with that? When someone else is saying, no, we don't feel like this is it. And meanwhile, on the other hand, God is confirming and confirming and confirming. So I just had to make the decision, I'm going to go with what God says. And, and so I had, to, I had to really pray into that because it was, it was kind of a painful thing because these are people that when I was first coming back to the Lord, they were right there with me, carrying me along the way. And so it was a tough, it was a tough time for me because I, I, had, to, I had to go against that, that voice that was saying, you know, we just don't know. We're just not sure. But I knew... I had the word from the Lord. I had that confirming word from God to do it. And since then, we've been married for four years now. We have a 10-month-old son. Uh, we have a three-year-old boy. Amanda is 10 now, 10 years old now. And it's just been incredible. It's been one of the most uh, supernatural journeys I think I've ever been on in my life. Uh, we are together 24 hours a day, seven days a week because we work, both work for the ministry from home. And there's just such a grace that God puts on you when you move into something and you step out into something that he has aligned you to be in. And I just love living in that place of the supernatural with his grace on it where I can walk through it and we don't have these issues, you know, of being together all the time and trying to, and pulling our hair out and all those things, you know, and, and it's just been incredible. It's been amazing. <laughs>